I, I had a lot of questions. I'm sure you had a lot of questions, but rest assured, we're going to answer them. Knew it. The Marvel Cinematic Universe's Phase 4 is coming to an end, and the threat of Kang the Conqueror looms in the near yet distant future. After acquiring the rights to use the X-Men and the mutants in the MCU, Marvel Studios has slowly but surely been surprising fans with themes and characters related to them in recent times. Furthermore, Deadpool 3 was just announced under the Marvel Studios banner, revealing that Hugh Jackman will return to reprise his role as Wolverine at least one more time. With the events of Avengers Secret War certainly set to introduce us to a plethora of familiar variants and new X-Men characters alike, it's time to speculate on which X-Men we could see in the MCU phases 5 and 6. But time is of the essence, so let's go ahead and dive right into it. I need you to clear your head and to stay as calm as possible. What? What do you mean? The most obvious and first entry on our list here is Professor Charles Xavier, who is not only the leader and founder of the Uncanny X-Men, but he has also already appeared inside of the MCU in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Of course, portrayed by Sir Patrick Stewart in this alternate universe, heavy rumors, fan anticipation, and admitted interest from actor Giancarlo Esposito might position the Danish-born thespian as the MCU's main version of the iconic Professor X moving forward. Leading his group of gifted youngsters and fighting for mutant kind in every iteration of the X-Men, whether on screen or in comic book pages, who better to locate and rally together a new team of mutants than one of the strongest and most powerful telepaths ever known? With the revelation of Kamala Khan being the first official mutant inside of the Marvel Cinematic Universe during the Miss Marvel series, perhaps Charles Xavier will attempt to contact her after her upcoming adventures in the Marvels movie. Could it be possible that Cerebro also exists within the main MCU timeline? What if the Professor has silently been assembling his blue and gold decorated posse behind the scenes already? It's certainly possible, we'll just have to wait and see. James Howlett, also known as Logan or Weapon X, but best known as Wolverine, is one of the most popular and recognizable X-Men and Marvel characters of all time. With roughly 10 appearances in films over the last 20 years already, as was stated in the intro, it has recently been revealed in a series of comedic videos posted to all sorts of social media that Hugh Jackman will once again return to reprise his iconic role as Wolverine in Deadpool 3. This is incredibly important moving forward in phases 5 and 6 of the MCU, considering DP P3 is Marvel Studios' first stab at the sword-swinging Merc with the Mouth's film franchise, pun intended. Regardless of how many times we've gotten to see Wolverine on screen slashing his way through the likes of Soldiers, Sabretooth, and versions of Deadpool that we wish we could all forget, fans will never get tired of witnessing Wolverine's ferocity in adamantium claws in action. Now I know that it was once said that the film Logan would be Hugh Jackman's last time playing the timeless mutant in the movies, however, he will return to the role before Avengers Secret Wars even happens, meaning that Deadpool 3 might be the first of a hand handful of appearances of Jackman's Wolverine in the MCU, provided that this isn't the actual last time that he plays the part, which is certainly possible. Joining the X-Men in both the comics and movies, Wade Wilson, aka Deadpool, as played by Ryan Reynolds, first appeared in cinemas in X-Men Origins Wolverine, quite possibly the worst of all the live-action X-Men movies ever made, although Dark Phoenix certainly gives it a run for its money. Thankfully, killed off by Logan at the end of that movie, we would finally see another triumphant attempt at the fourth wall-breaking mercenary in Deadpool and then Deadpool 2, with Reynolds successfully turning the near-immortal and comedic assassin into a blockbuster movie franchise. Franchise. Kevin Feige and Marvel Studios would soon after procure the rights to the X-Men and mutants for use on film and television, due in part to the whole, you know, Disney-Fox merger thing. Furthermore, this would muddy up the Fox X-Men universe largely, as it would appear the new successful version of Deadpool exists in a closely similar but vastly different universe to the main X-Men continuity. Heck, they even held the final battle of the first Deadpool movie on a crashed helicarrier, nearly identical to the ones used by S.H.I.E.L.D. in the Avengers. You cannot tell me that's not what that is. Joking in the recent Deadpool 3 teasers that the events of the movie Logan also take place in an alternate future timeline, both X-Men Days of Future Past and Deadpool 2 have already explored multiversal time travel. All in all, the Deadpool movies have been grossly successful, but the dire implications of each movie have been minuscule in the grand scheme of things. My theory here is that Marvel Studios will throw us a curveball and use the highly anticipated trilogy film as a vehicle to shoehorn various mutants into the MCU. Continuing down the Deadpool path, Colossus has been featured heavily in the first two Deadpool movies and is presumably going to return in the upcoming third installment in the franchise. A staple of the X-Men roster, both in the comic books and on television shows and movies, Colossus, real name Peter Rasputin, is a Russian mutant capable of forming a virtually indestructible metal exoskeleton around his skin. On top of that, Colossus is incredibly strong and powerful, as well as an expert tactician, combatant, and leader. I for one hope that if Colossus 
Colossus does appear in Phase 5 or 6, that we will finally get to see him don the red and yellow legless unitard from the comics, just so that we can see those shiny, shiny legs. Unable to return to his future timeline at the end of Deadpool 2, Cable, played by Josh Brolin, blew the doors wide open for universe hopping and time travel when it comes to mutants and the X-Men. Undoubtedly capable of eventually taking both Deadpool and Wolverine on an adventure through the multiverse in some capacity, perhaps Cable is actually vital to mutants getting into the Marvel Cinematic Universe as a whole. A time-traveling, telepathic, and telekinetic soldier, Cable is a member of the X-Men in the comics and has seemingly aligned himself with the team in the Deadpool sequel. To take things further, Cable is also the son of Scott Summer aka Cyclops. And who else in the MCU is a distant future relative of a beloved superhero? Kang the Conqueror. Who is related to Reed Richards, aka Mr. Fantastic from the Fantastic Four? Could it be that Cable has encountered or already caught wind of Kang in his timeline? Would he be able to warn Deadpool and Wolverine of the threat to the multiverse as a whole and explain to them that they must join him in traversing to the main MCU timeline? When you really stop and think about it, timing here is everything. Speaking of the Summers and their family lineage, Scott Summers, better known as Cyclops, is the timeless OG leader of the X-Men. Using his infamous optical beams and exceptional sense of trigonometry, Cyclops has been involved in a myriad of pivotal battles over the sanctity of Earth and across time and space. As stated in our previous entry, Cyclops is the future father of Cable, and if we are to assume that Cable will have a hand in transporting at least some mutants into the MCU, it would be more than fitting that he meet and fight alongside a younger version of his father within the MCU as well. Seen in multiple X-Men movies, most notably played by James Marsden, Cyclops' timeline was in utter shambles after the character's last appearance in the X-Universe. Setting that aside though, speculation has been running rampant online since a pair of Cyclops-themed shoes were shown in the MCU during the end credits of an episode of She-Hulk Attorney at Law, and concept art from the Miss Marvel series was released showing a person in a Cyclops costume. Could the X-Men, or at least Cyclops, already exist within the MCU? Jumping over and perching on another branch in the Summers family tree, Alex Summers, aka Havoc, has similar powers to his brother Cyclops. However, his energy beams are projected out of his hands and arms as opposed to his eyes. Throughout his appearances in the X-Men First Class run of movies, Havoc could shoot concussive blasts from his chest, which didn't really make the most sense to me personally, but that's neither here nor there. One of the most important and historically vast families, both by blood and by marriage, in all of Marvel media, the Summers are incredibly important. And with the X-Men mutants slowly but surely popping up across the Marvel Cinematic Universe, what better time and opportunity than Phase 5 and 6 to tell the Summers family's story? And hopefully, doing so properly. The third and youngest of the Summers boys, all of whom joined the X-Men at one point or another, Gabriel Summers, codenamed Vulcan, is the most powerful of the three brothers, ranking as an Omega-level mutant. Born and incubated on the Shi'ar throne world called Chandelar, Vulcan would be used to biotechnologically breed slaves, which aged him rapidly. Escaping and ending up on Earth eventually, close friend and lover of Professor X Moira McTaggart would adopt Vulcan and help him hone his incredible powers. Ironically enough, the Shi'ar are also one of the three major extraterrestrial empires that exist in the Marvel Universe, alongside the Skrulls and the Kree. Furthermore, they are the last race of alien imperialists that we have yet to meet in the MCU. Scott, Alex, and Gabriel Summers are the children of Christopher and Catherine Summers, the former being known as Corsair and the latter being deceased. Both Corsair and Catherine were members of the Starjammers, a group of intergalactic renegade space pirates. Sounds awfully similar to a couple of other space-based teams we've encountered in the Ravagers and the Guardians of the Galaxy. Considering that the Guardians Holiday Special and Guardians Volume 3 are both set to come out really not that far from the posting of this video, there's a pretty respectable possibility that we will be introduced to the Starjammers in some form or fashion come Phase 5. If Cyclops is Cable's father, then Jean Grey must be Cable's mother, right? Well, although that is not the case on a physical or technical level, Jean Grey does have to at least exist to some extent in order for Cable to be born. In the comics, the powerful telepath and eventual host of the Phoenix Force, Jean Grey was cloned by Mr. Sinister, creating a woman by the name of Madeline Pryor. With Jean thought having been killed, Scott would fall in love with what was essentially her doppelganger, and then go on to have a child known as Nathan Summers the previously mentioned Cable. However, Jean would eventually return and adopt Cable as her own as Madeline would go on to become the Goblin Queen. Great name there. On top of being one of the OG X-Men, Jean and the Phoenix Force have been the focus of the majority of live-action X-Men films to date and it's likely fans have had enough of this character and story being told over and over and over again. With that being said, 
perhaps focusing on her roots and development while Cyclops takes center stage in the MCU for the first while would reinvigorate fans with excitement for the character. If it were up to me, she would get her old name back as well. We could really use some Marvel Girl in the MCU. Another mutant born in a dystopic future who would time travel to the past to join the X-Men, Lucas Bishop actually grew up hearing about the legend of the X-Men through bedtime stories. Possessing many superpowers such as energy absorption, accelerated healing, superhuman physiology, and psionic resistance, Bishop is also a wicked shot and should not be trifled with. Only seen one time in live action media, in X-Men Days of Future Past, transitioning Bishop into the MCU would be as easy as a snap of the fingers. Could it be possible that Bishop and Cable are aware of each other and have possibly worked together in the future to save the past? Could it be that Bishop is also aware of Kang the Conqueror's plans and is headed to the past to try to stop him? What if Kang was the reason for the destruction of Bishop and Cable's future? Let us know what you think in the comments. Warren Worthington III, aka Angel, is a mutant who grew up incredibly wealthy and developed his powers and abilities over time, much to the dismay of his parents. Sprouting huge, beautiful white angel wings that allow him to, of course, fly, Warren also possesses superhuman physiology and is an expert combatant. At one point, Angel was given techno-organically enhanced wings and a hypersonic scream by Apocalypse, becoming one of his four horsemen known as Death or Archangel. Although we have seen Angel played by Ben Foster in X-Men The Last Stand in a brief and sporadic appearance, and Archangel played by Ben Hardy in X-Men Apocalypse, Angel is an OG member of the X-Men roster and deserves more shine than he's previously gotten. If Marvel Studios is keen on rebooting the X-Men their way from scratch inside of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, then there is no better candidate to include in your initial lineup than Warren Worthington III. I just love saying that name. It's yet another example of Marvel leaning really heavily on alliteration. Storm is a powerful mutant with weather manipulating abilities and is often thought of as divine or a goddess. Not only is Storm a mainstay among the X-Men ranks, she has also fought with Cyclops for the title of leader within the group of uncanny mutants. In the comic, Storm was married to the King of Wakanda and Black Panther himself, T'Challa, and by proxy has become the queen of the vibranium-enriched country. We have seen Storm a number of times in the films most notably played by Halle Berry. With the sequel movie Black Panther Wakanda Forever set to release soon and ending Phase 4 of the MCU proper, could it be possible that T'Challa and Storm have crossed paths before? Perhaps they were romantically entangled and we just never heard about it. Maybe they had a kid, I don't know, it's possible. If they did, I wonder what that kid's name would be. Chimera from Earth 13729 in the comics is the daughter of the King and Queen of Wakanda, Black Panther, and Storm. A member of the X-Men and born a mutant, Chimera has the ability to influence animal behaviors and is accompanied by a giant Black Panther and a falcon. She also has an enchanted sense of smell developing naturally bestial powers over time. Chimera is also an expert hand-to-hand -hand combatant and tracker, and uses a dagger that she keeps very close by. Furthermore, Chimera travels back and forth through time, aiding the X-Men in both the past and the present. As we have established throughout this video, and as the MCU has established throughout the earlier phases, time and multiversal hopping are basically interchangeable. If Chimera were to appear in Wakanda forever, perhaps the birth of a mutant child is enough to deter the first mutant himself, Namor the Submariner, from ultimately bringing Wakanda to its demise. Eric Lencher, aka Magneto, the founder of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants and the Acolytes, masterful and mystical manipulator of metals and all frequencies on the electromagnetic spectrum, a ruthlessly and dastardly survivor and charismatic leader. What more can possibly be said about the man? Portrayed to perfection by both Ian McKellen and Michael Fassbender on numerous occasions in the movies, if and when Magneto officially joins the MCU, there will surely be a fresh take on the character. More recently in the comics, Magneto has not only only fully aligned with Professor X and the X-Men, but has realized that the assurance of the survival of the mutant race is far more important than any petty infighting among mutants. Magneto also assumes a role as leader of the team when the Professor is busy or otherwise incapacitated. Which, I mean, kinda makes sense, I guess. With most fans anticipating that Doctor Doom is going to be revealed as the puller of strings behind the scenes in the MCU, could it be possible that Magneto has been doing the same? One of my two MCU Magneto theories are that the islands of Genosha and Krakoa have existed in the MCU this whole time, hidden from the rest of the world much like Wakanda was, all the while inhabited by mutants and Morlocks underground. 
I also theorize that Wanda Maximoff has been part mutant this whole time, and her father is in fact Magneto, just like we were told in the comics all those years ago. Although we have seen flashbacks to Wanda and her family when she was a child, it is entirely possible that her spiral into madness caused her to create false memories in her mind. That is kind of something that she's done a bit on the page, so you know, it's possible. Yes, there was a series based loosely off of Legion from the comics. No, nobody actually watched the show. Yes, I'm sure that you definitely did. You can stop writing your comment. You're like one of three people. All kidding aside, David Holler, AKA Legion, son of Professor Charles Xavier, is quite possibly the most dangerous and powerful mutant ever known. Classified as an above Omega level mutant, Legion is tormented and suffers from hundreds of thousands of personalities being born every minute of every day inside of his head. With these personalities also come unique and individual mutant abilities, all varying in power level, which Legion also manifests and can use if desired. This means that Legion essentially has a never ending and ever evolving list of superhuman capabilities, some that he can control and some that he can't. A member of the X-Men in the comics, as well as an often unwilling and unconscious foe of his father's team of mutants, Legion has demonstrated the ability to bend time and space, which ultimately permits universal and time travel. Could Phase 5 of the MCU see Legion play the reverse role of Scarlet Witch in the comics, uttering the word mutant before bringing mutants into the main MCU timeline? Or maybe we're all just existing in his head right now. And that's our list of X-Men we could see in Phase 5 or 6 of the MCU. Who do you want to see join the new iteration of the X-Men? Do you think that mutants have existed in the MCU this whole time, or is the X-Gene a brand new thing? Let us know your thoughts and theories in the comments below, and be sure to like, subscribe, and enable notifications so you don't miss a minute of Adamantium Clawed comic content.